About six years ago, I was in Florida with my sister Jill. We decided to make a video, How to Make Coffee Stained Tags. Jill sold them to various craft stores. Well, life has changed a lot, and Jill now teaches art classes, and is no longer a craft supply vendor. We decided to re-release the video on this channel, so others could learn how to create their own coffee stained tags. Hello, my name is Jill Hagland. I'm Tweety Jill to many of you out there. And I welcome you to my home studio in Bradenton, Florida. It's a nice sunny summer day. I'm so looking forward to teaching you how to dye coffee tags, tags burlap, and trims. That's something I love to do. I do it about once a month. I'm going to show you exactly how I do it here in my home studio today. Here's the things, the exact things that you need to start first. Here's a stock pot full of warm water. I like a nice tall pot so I can get a lot done at one time. It's not boiling hot because we don't want to be hurt, <laughs> steam our fingers or hurt ourselves, so it doesn't need to be boiling. I took it from the stove when it was very, very warm and I set it in my sink. Here's the items that I like to coffee dye. I cut up old tablecloths, crocheted tablecloths. I'm sure you've all seen these at flea markets and garage sales. I love these. These are wonderful when they're coffee dyed or even left white. This is just a piece of one. Here's some trims. We all have a lot of different trims. The only type of fabric that really accepts the coffee dye well is something that's made out of a natural fiber. You can't coffee dye polyester. So this is a cotton type of a trim. You can also coffee dye burlap very well. I love burlap coffee dye. When it's all finished it looks real funky and the edges are really neat after they get out of the dryer and it does this natural process in the dryer. Sometimes I use a darker type of burlap. Sometimes I use a lighter burlap. It doesn't matter. You'll see the different reactions to the colors when the process is complete. I also love and I know you all do because everyone's always asking me about how to copy that tags. That's mainly what this video is about. We have a selection of tags in our card kits at this point in time, and we sell them by the thousands in a box. And this is the selection that we have right now online for a thousand minimum quantity per box. Now I'm going to show you how I do it. Here are the utensils I use. I like a long spoon for dissolving the coffee once I put it in the hot water. It keeps your fingers from being steamed. Same reason for the long tongs to lift the coffee tags out or fabric out when you're ready to strain it. I love using a colander. I have several colanders. I put the different size tags in. I coffee dye my tags one size at a time because I like to be able to store them in individual jars that are just that size of take. You'll see at the end it makes it really nice if you can just do one size at a time and dry them. You have them all in one area, you stick them in a jar, there they are a few use later. So I have several colanders here that I drain things in once they take them out of the water. They're ready for me. I have this one very nice colander that I actually put in the sink. And I love it. It goes right into the sink. It fits right into most size of sinks. I got this at Bed Bath & Beyond. It's a fabulous calendar. We also need to have coffee. I buy any type of generic coffee. You do not have to buy a certain type. I used to love the vanilla roast because it smelled good and your artwork smelled good when it was done. But actually all coffee works and now I'm to the point where I just buy the most inexpensive coffee I can find and the biggest jar. Here's a measuring cup, optional. I always wear an apron, sometimes a full apron. As you can see, this one I've worn so much, it's, uh, I just coffee dyed it one day because I had so much coffee on it. So I'll put my apron on. As you can see, there's towels, old, just pick up some towels, old towels that you have in the garage or whatever, nice big sizes, several big towels. You're gonna need to strain and drain your coffee tags on once they come out of the colander. So let's get ready. Now I clean my work area so we can get started on the next section of the video. Exactly how to do the tags. When I do tags, I put them in the water 
one at a time, you'll notice. If you just dumped the tags into the coffee water, a big glob, that's what you're going to end up with is tags that are partially dyed on top or on the bottom. You separate them inside, they're not dyed correctly and you just have a mess, especially after spending your well-earned money on your tags. So it, when you see what I'm doing, it's for a purpose. First thing I'm going to do is add the coffee. I probably use a lot more coffee than you've heard other people use. Part of it is because I don't want to wait. <laughs> if you have deep, strong coffee, you die really quickly. Here's my cup. In the stock pot about this size, I would add a very, very good amount of coffee. Got a cup here. My stock pot is about three-fourths full of water. Warm, very, very warm water. Too warm to put your hand in, but not boiling. The next step is just dissolve your coffee in the water. Now I'm seeing that's not even close to how strong I want it. And that's what you need to do. You might have a smaller pot, maybe a quart pot, and just look at it and see how strong you want it. As you can see in this jar about how much I've used, I would say I want at least probably twice to three times that much. Again, I'm going to check it. It's pretty good, but I'm still going to add a little bit more. Another half cup. I know some of you out there might go, she didn't need to put all that in. Maybe I didn't, but I like, I like a nice, strong, quickly done, and go on to other things. So I'm putting another half cup. Okay, my favorite tag, this one, almost all of our stamps fit this tag, our TJ Design Stamp Collections, so this is, I love these tags, I truly, truly do, and all my girls that teach that I have uh, been working with love them, when I show up with these, I might as well be showing up with little diamond rings, because they want coffee dyed tags, and that's the best present I can give them. Okay, here we go, we're getting started now. One at a time. Takes a few minutes, but it's worth it to do it the right way. Once you get several in there and you see they're starting to overlap each other, push them down with their tongs. So they're not sitting on top of each other and keeping the other one from getting dye on it. I'm going to fill this pot up. So in a few more minutes, you're going to see this full. And I will pop these half of these tags. Okay, and I'm adding tags to my stock pot. Let's check them, see how they look. Hmm. They're getting there. I think I would like to add a little more water just because I want it done quicker. I mean, excuse me, a little more coffee. <laughs> a little more coffee because I want it done it quicker. So I'm going to add a whole other cup. The reason I'm doing this most, the reason I'm doing this is to show you that you can add coffee later. This is how you do it. If you don't think they're dying quick enough or the coffee wasn't strong enough, just push the takes to the side. Your water is very warm. It will melt the rest of the coffee easily. There we go. See that dark, deep, rich coffee? See? That's not the color that you want. Now, this won't take, but, oh, I would leave them in there and check them what color you prefer. You can do light or dark, or you can leave some in there longer so you have a variety of colors. These are just about done, but not quite. Okay, I think our tags are ready now. They've cooked enough. I'm going to take my tongs and pull them out and dip them in, and put them into colander so they can strain. I do this semi-gently. Takes are pretty tough, but you don't want to ruin too many with a fold. It's a little character, but you don't want to ruin too many of them like that. I'm going to reach them down in here, getting them all.
Okay, this is all my MD8 tags that I've been done. We call these MD8s. Okay, I'm going to let this set for a while. While it's setting here and draining most of the water out into the sink, I'm going to start doing my next size takes. Okay, round tags next. I want to show you all, I did add coffee a few times. I went through practically this whole entire jar of coffee in this stock pot. If it was full, I absolutely would use the whole jar. This was a good experiment for you to see how much coffee you need and how much water. I love the circular pegs because they fit all of our little round stamps that we make that looks like little postage cancellations that are custom made designs. We go through a lot of round tapes and everybody loves them. Put them down in there. I'm going to do the whole box. Nice and rich already. I'll quickly put the rest in and we're going to take those out right away. Oh. The reason to drop them basically like this is so they're separated enough, like I said, to coat both sides of the cakes with coffee. If you just drop this thing in, it, they wouldn't look that great when you're done. Another item I wanted to mention is you really should use warm water. I've actually let the water cool off, went back later when I had time and threw some of the takes in there. And you don't get that warm coffee look like this. They come out with a little grayish, strange, just the warmth that adds the warmth to the color. Okay, now these are taking the dye very quickly. So I'm going to take these out right away. There's my MD8s. I'm going to use another colander. For my circular tape. I like takes. <laughs> but later is when you reap the rewards and you have all these wonderful rich golden circles. Okay, on to the next side. Looks like that's the last of circular takes. Let's go on to the next size and let these drain a while.
Now we're on to our next size tag. This is a manila collared shipping tag. Compared to the white tags, it's a little darker. It takes the coffee dye fairly quickly. Because the strings are real thick and they come packaged loose, I kind of dump these in more of a, in a loose fashion. Like just get them submerged into the water. There we go. I love the nice rich color of some of these tags. And they're finished. Submerge them in the water. I love it because the strings even die so nicely. They get them into the water. These seem to be a little more thick, and they also that might, might also be the reason that they just don't seem to stick together. They separate easier. A few more here, and be done. These have been, been in here only about a minute and a half, and they're ready. They started dark, they die quickly, and that, like I said, by this time I have a whole jar of coffee in here. So we'll put those in another colander strain. And then I'm going to show you how to do the fabric. Oh, you're hiding in there. Okay, ready for fabric? Okay, now we're ready to go on to how to do fabric. It's just a little different because it needs a little more um, saturation of the water or the coffee to go into the, a towel or something to, because they're more full of water. So here we go. This is my doily. They die very fast. I don't like my doilies real dark, so I take it out right away. Interesting fact. If you think, oh, I didn't want it to be that dark, Lighten it. That's a good idea. Even after it dries, if you wanted to lighten it, you could just put it in the washer and it washes all, most of it away. Okay, there's one piece. Here's my burlap piece. My coffee now is not as hot. It doesn't bother me to stick my hand in it. But if it's still warm, make sure you always use your tongs. Don't burn yourself. Look how quick that changed, and look how rich and beautiful that is. Because my coffee isn't that warm, I can do this. Put it over here. Here's a little piece of trim. Because it's cotton trim, it's going to absorb that fairly quickly. Here's my fabric trim. Took the coffee dye real well. Here's my light linen colored burlap. I'm going to put the whole piece in. It's, I didn't cut it or anything this time. Okay, we're just going to plunge this right into the water. Look how quick that changes that rich color. Doesn't take long when you have all that coffee in it. Most of the water out. Set it over here to drain, drain out on the towel. And you can even do muslin. Muslin's great too. I like to use muslin for backgrounds of my altered work. Plunge in. Muslin's another natural fiber. Cotton duck. Cotton fabrics, anything that's natural, dyes really rich and nice. Beautiful. Now see, we want to make sure it's all done. Put it in there again. My coffee's still warm. It's not cold. It's still warm, but it's, it's, I can manage handling things. That's the best time to do fabrics. But always test it. Please be very careful with hot coffee. Please. I'm going to let that set in there a moment. I think it's ready. Now once I have my fabric over here,
have our, our coffee dyed saturated fabric here. We try to drain out as much of the coffee and liquid that we can before we put it in the dryer. One nice way to do it, it's an old military secret for drying your clothes on the field. Put it in a towel, twist it. in there. Okay. If you twist it two or three times, it comes out practically dry. If you use a brand new towel, twist it again, it'll be more and more dry. This though is perfectly fine for putting in the dryer. I put my coffee diaper lap in a pillowcase, a king size pillowcase, and I tie a knot. And I made you two, <clears throat> excuse me, I made you two or three pillowcases, tie a knot, tight knot, the fabric would be inside. You have four, three, four pillowcases full of fabric. The reason I do this, and I throw it in the dryer, the reason I do this is because there's a lot of strings that start coming off. And I don't like them in my dryer. I'm afraid they might get caught in the corners or cracks and I don't want to ruin my dryer. And also, when you just throw this in, which I've done dozens of times, it ruins your dryer. The color gets all over the dryer. If you put a white shirt in there afterwards, you have a mess. So this helps. So I throw this in the dryer and I leave it on about, oh, like you would normal to dry something like this half an hour. And then um, when I take it out, I take it out of the pillowcase, it has the most beautiful look to it because the threads have come apart and it looks gorgeous. One thing that you still want to do is wipe your dryer out because I might have some brown in there from the coffee and you don't want to ruin your clothes, you're going to put it in next time. So, okay, now we're back to our tags. With all the tags that we've dyed, about over a thousand, <laughs> we need room because I like to put them straight out of my granite counter. If you don't have granite, you can use cookie trays or... I think you can even put them on a formica. I just put them on my granite and let them dry. My shelves are full of tapes. So let's get started drying our tapes. One thing I want to mention about the coffee, I've put my stock pot of coffee away. If you use distilled water, you can store your coffee for a period of time. If you just use tap water, the coffee will go bad and get mold on it. So you just toss it out. So that's the secret to having your coffee dye last longer. Here we go, we're going to start drying out our takes. I just lay them on the counter. I work fairly fast. And if they curl up, nice. I do not iron my tags. Some people do. I like them to look natural. I put them as close together as I can because I want to get as many out as I can. One thing you could do is add a little character to your tags if you want by sprinkling on a little instant coffee right when it still has a sheen on the tags when they're drying. Or if they're a little too dry, just spray it with a little mist and sprinkle a little coffee granules around. Just for a little effect. I don't do it on all my tags, just a few. I've got, actually this is an old vintage shaker. I'm going to put my coffee in it, not much, just a little coffee in it. There's thick granules and thin, fine granules. It's only the fine granules that are going to work with this. Okay, there we go. These are just starting to dry. They're just a little bit wet, still a little damp. These are perfect for sprinkling coffee on to get the effect I'm talking about. The reason I like to use a little shaker is it's a little more control about how much coffee you put on. You can just put them on, pinching the coffee between your fingers. If it's a little too dry, you can mist it. Now 
But as you can see, you don't quite have the control you have with the shaker. Let's dig in if you want. I like to sprinkle it. Another thing you could do is take your coffee and crunch it up with a spoon or throw it in a real fine food processor so you have more pieces that are fine. But I don't like a lot of sprinkles. I like a natural. I'm getting a little hot coffee. I'm going to pour it in the saucer. This isn't just my dirty dishes stacked up here. I have a reason for these being here. I'm going to make coffee rings on my tags. This is how you do it. Dip your cup into the coffee, just barely touch it. Set it on a few tags. See how those look. As you notice, my kitchen is filled with tags. They're drying. Tags here. Tags all over the counter. Tags over on the stove area. The tags are still drying. Sometimes if I try to hurry the drying up, I'll just flip the tags over. But you do not need to. So in a couple hours, these tags will all be dry and ready to put in jars and ready to work art. And also, I wanted to mention, sometimes I'll buy these old burlap feed sacks at antique stores or flea markets or farmer's market, and you can buy those. And they're fabulous for backgrounds, for altered art. For instance, our poultry party stamp set collage pack and card kit. You can do something with the background from the poultry party set on a feed sack like this. Fabulous idea. Okay, it looks like we're off on another adventure. I bet. Oh, I heard it. The dryer being. No, oh, this teething ain't the thing yet. It's not thinking. It's supposed to be. I think I said on 10 minutes instead of 2. Gotcha. I like to put my tags in jars. I love these big jars. You get them at Walmart. They're wonderful jars. These big ones, like this one here. It's only $4, $2. You have wonderful things to store your tags in. Over here are my circle tags. I'm going to fill my jar up.
either tie it with its string of its own, or I put burlap around it. Then I have a nice stash. Fabulous. Coffee dye. Burlap to use over and over and over again in a myriad of ways. We've been spending our morning coffee dyeing tags and fabric and trims and papers, and I want you to know that there's a wonderful way to store your tags. I like to use transparent containers, and I choose jars because they're nice and big, our tags fit in them. That's why I dyed the tags, individual, certain specific tags, in orders, because this way you have a jar of circle tags, a jar of shipping tags, a jar of the MD8 tags. I even keep my strings because these are makes really nice strings for these sometimes or different things. So I keep the strings that came out of the dryer as well in the jar and I grab those once in a while. And every jar has its own size tags. It's wonderful for your art studio. They look really cool and they are wonderful to access because you can see what's in the jar. I wanted to say one couple of very last moment things here about, about uh, coffee dyeing. I like to keep them loosely packed. I don't stuff them in the jar. That is, is probably just plenty right there for that jar. If you cram them in there, you're going to end up with tags that are ruined and you've spent your whole morning making tags. You want them to be nice and accessible to use in your artwork. When I have leftover tags, which you always will when you do boxes of thousands, um, I have this wonderful antique crate right here. This is a wonderful gem. I just love it. It will last forever. And I, again, put my tags sizes in different areas and divisions in the container so they're easy to access. And I love just using this for my extras. So sometimes when I go to a show, I just grab this right here and I use this. So that's wonderful way to store your tags. One last moment uh, to explain something I, I mentioned before. The reason I don't fold my burlap and roll it is because it keeps from making creases and folds. And so I just roll it up and I like to tie it with jutes. Nothing fancy. But again, us artists like things that look pretty and look ins inspire us. And so I love having my stash of burlap all ready to go. My tags all separated, dried, ready to go, work on. My door lays on a little basket. My towel for the next experience in coffee dyeing. Hmm. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy coffee dyeing as much as I do. Hey, if you enjoy this video, like, subscribe, and click on a link above. Thank you.